welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be finishing our Italian Greyhound. We have this little corner to go, we're going to darken a few areas up and then he will be done. Everything you need is listed in the description below. If you have any questions let me know. I'm going to zoom in again so that we can focus on this part of the um, Italian Greyhound and we'll get started. So I'm going to start off with my warm grey one as a base layer and I'm just going to apply it across all of this um, white section making sure I'm going over that tape and making sure I'm going over this tape so that we get those nice straight edges so I'm kind of drawing on the tape first and then just running it over Again, it just depends how you're doing it. If, you, um, if you've if you just marked out with a ruler, you can just go up to the align. Um, or you can have a jagged edge and then as you um, edit the photo, if you take a photo, you'll be able to straighten and crop your photo so it looks like it's got straight edges. Lots of different ways to do it. Um, yeah. Again, not too worried about um, fur direction because I can change this with the rest of the layers that we're going to add to the piece. It's just a matter of just getting some colour down, getting a base layer so that we've got a layer to work on top of with details. And this is just going to help us smooth out the two for this paper. I'm going to have to keep sharpening my warm grey one in a minute. But also, once we've coloured in this large expanse of white, it also means that um, it's not as intimidating to look at. When you've got a blank piece of paper, a large expanse of white, it can be quite intimidating. Like You, you look at that and you think, oh my gosh, I've got all that to colour in. Or add shading, add detail to. Whereas if we break it down into the sections that we've been doing, that's um, made it easier. But also, once we've got the colour in, we can look at it and go, actually, it's not as bad as we um, first thought. Okay, so now I've got a nice base layer. So we can work now on top of this base layer in smaller sections, and I can work on building um, the detail. So I'm coming in with my warm grey two first. And I'm just going over the top here. I may actually get my gold again and use the gold. Um, now the way that my lighting is hitting this paper, you can't really see the warm grey too, but I'm using medium pressure. And you should be able to see some really nice fur lines coming through as you add the warm grey too. Don't press too hard so that you can't get any more layers on top, but you want... Um, to be able to see that warm grey too being added on top of your base layer and just over the top here okay okay so i've now got my gold and with the gold i'm just going to start following that fur direction as we're coming round and i'm going to apply this across the whole layer uh, the whole base layer this is going to create um, the fur direction and a tonal value to work on top of. Now this part may take a while, don't worry, do it in little sections. So I've map mapped out a little sort of circular section here. I'm just going to do this little section first. And we're just going to build it up slowly in little sections.
constantly, I'm constantly um, looking back at my reference photo. So this is coming down here. So I'm just going to map in the fur direction here. And then it just starts to curve around here. So we're going straight down and a curve. Now we're going to work on top of this gold with some of the grey tones, the warm greys. Um, don't think we're going to be using maybe a bit of blue over here, but um, I say blue, the cold greys. But it's mainly going to be the warm greys. So this is going to be the final part to this tutorial now. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I've really enjoyed this guy. Um, I have to say he's been a lot of fun. Sorry, I know I'm going quiet, I'm just focusing. <laughs> and it is just one of those sort of repetitive parts of this tutorial. I'm just going short lines to create this fur. Once we've got this kind of tone in, we'll be able to build up those darks um, and we'll finish this section that we left off last time. But I just want to focus on this little section first. So the next, uh, the spaniel that we'll be doing next, we've so we've done a black and white border collie, um, and we know we've now done this grey dog. The spaniel is um, a liver spaniel, so brown spaniel. Um, so we've covered like the main kind of colours. Um, I've had somebody ask about doing like a male dog. Um, so I'll, I'll have a look for a nice male photo. And then it will be just down to like fur types that you want to cover. Um, if there's anything in particular that you struggle with, let me know. Um, and I'll look for different dog breeds that I can um, help you with. I think we also need to cover different fur types, so um, I'd like to look into like wire coats, um, curly coats, like a poodle, really, really curly. But we've kind of just done like the big main colours, so we'll look at doing fur types next. And I think doing one a month is sustainable for me. <laughs> as well as you guys um, and as we build up the amount of tutorials we'll do we'll have a nice um, backlog for people who come across the channel um, okay so I'm gonna just bring up this warm grey across here again uh, not warm grey sorry the gold just a little bit in here Okay, right, so I haven't gone all the way down this back. I've kind of done this section and I'm just going to focus on this section. I'm going to make it easier for you guys um, and also we can finish this section once we've done here. So I've got my um, one grey five and I'm just going to bring this one grey five into here again. I'm just going to darken this shoulder up now. This one grey five. Let's start to sort of bring this shoulder together. Okay, I'm 
again bringing that darker fur if anyone would take my um, dark sepia very lightly you're not going to press hard just going to darken some of this dark sepia up uh, some of this um, shadow with the dark sepia sorry Trying to, I'm getting ahead of myself, I think, when I'm trying to explain everything. Well, I'm grade five. My brain's jumping ahead instead of waiting to do the full sentence. And then the dark sepia, very lightly. So I'm just blending the warm grey five and the dark sepia. Try and get that nice blend. And I'm very using very light pressure with the dark sepia. I'm not pressing hard at all. Very lightly, and this is darker. So I'm just starting to darken this shoulder blade that we've got coming through. So I'm just using the dark sepia to darken this all up. And then this corner is kind of, kind of dark here, so like a triangle shape is what I'm seeing. So I'm just going to darken here. And again, going over that masking tape. So that we've got um, a straight line here. And because I've darkened this off, I'm just taking this dark sepia and I'm going to darken here again. And take the warm grey five. Just darkening some of these areas up again. That feel need to be darker. Um along here. And here. Just light pressure with a dark sepia. When you use that dark sepia, don't press too hard with it. And then the warm grey five. Along here. Okay, so you can see we've just started to really darken some of this up and it's just starting to pop again now. There's some areas that look finished, you just need to come in a bit more with those shadows and just darken them up ever so slightly. Okay, taking the warm grey four and I'm just coming back. Just darken along here and along here. And then I'll take that warm grey too over the top. Okay, so I'm a lot happier now with this section. So we're just going to keep keep this momentum and um, sort out this part of the shoulder now. I've now taken the cold grey four and I'm just going to bring this cold grey four in here. I'm feeling like we're getting a bit monochrome. And I just want to add a little bit of a bluish tone down here. Just to help with the um, highlighting going on in this part of the shoulder. So I'm using the cold grey 4 instead of the warm grey 4. Now if you wanted just to keep it with the warm grey 4, feel free. I just, I want to add a little bit of an extra colour. And I'm just going to bring that along here. Very lightly. And then I'm going to take my 
um, copper and I'm going to take this copper over what's that called grey for? and that's just going to bring that brownish tone back now if you don't have copper I would use nugget um, or you could use nugget instead of the copper I'm just trying to keep those tonal values the same the whole way through this piece so because I've used a lot of the copper I'm going to use um, copper I like to use the metallics in my work. I think they give some nice um, some nice colours. Right, I'm going back to the gold now. And because I'm not pressing too hard, this piece isn't looking shiny. So I don't use the metallics for metallics like metal work or anything I use them for these greyish tones and then I'm going to take the warm grey free over all this Okay, and then the warm grey too, just to act as sort of the highlight, but also to help with the blending between these colours. Just along here. <sighs> A few little bits of pencil pigment on the paper. Right. Um, and then the warm grey for, and I just want to blend this bit out a bit more. So I want this bit to look a little smoother than what it is at the moment. Um, and I'm actually going to bring this warm grey for all the way up here, just to darken. This section needs to be a bit darker here. So while we're finishing off this portrait, I'm also making sure that I'm darkening up these areas that I um, needed to darken. And just along here. And then I'll just use that one grey two again to help with that blending. And along here. Okay, right. So we need to get the darker sections in on uh, this bit of fur. So I've got my warm grey free and we have a darker section of fur here. So I'm going over the top of that gold area and we're just darkening up this bit of fur. Now this part of the fur goes a little out of focus so we're not too worried if we don't get all the detail in. And then just lightly fade it out. So taper those edges so that we can get a nice blend. Right, before I go any further, we've got like a really dark patch of fur here, which is why I haven't come in with the gold yet, because um, I can see these brownish undertones. So I'm going to actually take the burnt umber first, and we're going to add in the burnt umber to map out this dark patch of fur. Once we've got this bit of fur in, we can blend this section in nicely, work out the tonal values in this area, um, and then, yeah, we'll just go from there. So I've got my burnt umber and I'm just going to map in this dark patch of fur that I can see 
very light pressure with my burnt umber. I'm not going to press hard at all. And I'm just going to follow the fur direction. Small pencil strokes. It's This is a point where it's quite easy to rush to the end because you can see that you're nearly at the, at the end of the portrait. But keep these pencil lines sh short. We don't want to rush at this point. If you rush part your portrait, you can tell the areas that you've rushed normally, especially if it's a large area like um, this bit. So we're just going to take our time and build up this tonal value here. And it's going to come down here. And again, I'm just constantly looking back at that reference photo and just mapping in this brown tone that I can see. And we will go over this burnt umber with the greys. Um, I'm not quite sure if we'll use one grey three or four yet. We'll have a look. See which one we um, think looks best. Um... And this is coming down here as well. So I'm just constantly making sure I'm following that fur direction. And when I get to the um, tape, drawing over that tape. If you draw it over the tape as well with each layer, you're going to get a nice consistent edge. Rather than stopping, um, you'll be able to see where you stopped. I'm thinking as well, um, once we've done a few dogs, um, I'd quite like to do a fox as a tutorial. Um, I want to draw a fox anyway. In colour, the last time I did a fox was in graphite. I've not drawn one recently in colour. So um, I was thinking that maybe we'll do a fox as a tutorial. Similar size to this, maybe a bit smaller so it uh, doesn't take as long. We'll see. Um, I'm trying to get these tutorials not as long, but <laughs> I do like to take my time with my work. Um, and I guess that's the point of me doing these tutorials. I'm doing these pieces like I would any piece of my work anyway, so um, I don't rush. My, my pieces take a while. So I guess that it kind of gives you an insight into how I do the commissions and... How I would just, if I was doing this as a commission, this is exactly how I would approach it. I may have done a rounded edge for the neck, but I feel like a breed like this, where they're curvy and their necks are quite long, um, rather than just having a really long neck curved at the bottom, it's quite nice to include a bit of the shoulders. Um, and when I do my commissions, I try to include, depending on the pose that I'm sent by the client, try to include the um, part of the chest at least, um, rather than just parts of the neck. Sometimes it can look like they're cut off too short at the neck. It's quite nice to include a bit of the chest and shoulders. But again, it depends what you and the client decide on. I guess I could do, that could be another video I do in the future on um, how I do like the mock-ups for clients. Or how I, how, I, how I would do it for a client. Right, so that's a large area of burnt umber, but I've got that burnt umber in now. Um, and then I'm just going back to that gold and the areas where I don't have... Um, the burnt umber, I'm just going to bring that gold in.
again short strokes following the third direction. And it just take time. This has been quite a quick piece. Um, there's not been as much colour in this piece. This is quite subdued colour wise for me. Um, I like, as you could tell with the border collie, I guess, I like to use a lot of colours where I can. So this is quite muted for me, but hopefully it makes it easier for you to follow as well. I do try to keep it as simple as I can. And hopefully I explain everything <laughs> just well enough for you all. Right, so we need to start darkening up some of these other areas. So uh, one grey free. And I'm coming down from this shoulder here. We have a darker shadow. And it's coming sort of all the way down to about here and then fading out. And we can see we've already kind of mapped it in here. So I'm just going over the warm grey frame. I'm making sure I'm tapering these edges to get a nice smooth blended look. Doing this kind of fur can be very difficult getting that smooth look in the transition between the tones. So do take your time and just... If you need to blend and blend and blend so you get that smooth transition between the shades, do. Don't rush it. I, I think doing this kind of fur can be harder than like longer fur because everything is on show. Like all these blends between these colours, everything is on show. So getting that smooth, smooth transition is going to be more noticeable than say with long fur. Okay, um, and I'm going to bring this along here as well and just extend this part of the grey, one grey free still. And just make this area darker, see that needs to be darker there. And remember your, the way that you're drawing it, you may not need to darken the same areas that I do. And feel free to make, make the picture your own. It doesn't need to be an exact copy of mine. It doesn't need to be an exact copy of the reference photo. Okay. Where else do we need this one grey fray? Down here. And I'm going to start going over this burnt umber in this corner with a warm grey fray. Back over the tape, making sure that I always go over that tape and blend it there. And then over that what burnt umber blending. Okay, and then I'm just going to take the warm grey two. Again, using this to blend, but it's also kind of acting as the highlight for this bit of shine. Which I may get the warm grey, uh, the cold grey one, sorry, um, as well. We'll have a look, see what it looks like um, first. Okay, right, so this section is um, darker, so I'm going to get the warm grey four first and going over this burnt umber area with the warm grey four. If we need to go darker, we can. 
Um, I think warm grey three is going to be too light, so we're going to stick to the warm grey four. This needs to be sharper. And again, I'm just going to take this warm grey four over all of this burnt umber. So it's going to take a bit of time, but that's fine. I'm not going to rush. It takes as long as it takes. And there's something quite, I don't know, relaxing for me anyway, when I'm sat here just doing little pencil strokes and building up this fur. Um, yeah, I just really like it. I'm going back over. So I'm starting from the tape and going over. And then I can build up. Just making sure I've got that piece of paper under my hand. So the next full tutorial will be out in February. Um, I'm going to try and get some little videos out in between um before uh, february comes around Just take your time as you do this. You can see that we've still got quite a lot to go yet. And that's fine. It can be easy to want to rush, but do try not to. But we have all been there. We've all been there where we've rushed a piece. Because <laughs> you know, you just know you're so close to the finish. But Get in there with this section now. You can see I'm constantly rotating my um, pencil so that I'm constantly using the sharp point, uh, the sharpest edge of the pencil. So that the more lines I add, the more it just starts to flatten that pencil a bit. And then I just rotate and go to the sharp point. And then when I feel like I'm not getting any sharp edges and the pencil's a little too blunt, like I'm not getting enough pigment coming from the pencil, I'll sharpen the pencil. Sharp pencils always work best on um, the Fabriano anyway. Okay, we're nearly there. Just this little section to go. And then we just need it to blend all nicely because as you can see it just looks like a dark patch. <laughs> so we need this to start blending and looking like it's part of the dog. Right, so I'm going to still taking the warm grey 5 and I'm just going to darken some of the darker patches of fur that I can see along this back and along here.
again this is just with a warm grey for and then I can take the um, other warm greys to help me blend it in a minute tapering the edges where I know I'm going to have a blend um, I'm also wondering, would any of you be interested in a full body tutorial? So the spaniel that I've chosen, if you're in the Facebook group, you will have seen that it's um, got quite a bit of its body showing. And I'm zooming into its head um, so that we get that ear and we'll do a headshot. But um, would you be interested in a full body tutorial? Maybe like a dog lying down um, rather than stood. But um yeah let me know okay so i'm going back to the warm gray three um and i'm just going over some of that warm gray four and then blending back up here And again, sorry, that's focusing on my hand, I know, along here. Okay, so I'm going to take the warm grey four again. And... Oh, that might need sharpening, hang on. Um, and I'm just taking this one grey four again. <sighs> just where I can see that. I just need a little bit of one grey four in here to help with the blending. And along here. So this, at this point in the portrait now, it's all about trying to get this to look smooth and blended um, and darkening up any areas that we need to darken, basically, especially on this body. Um, okay, I'm going to take the one grey five, um, especially down here. So I'm sticking to the warm tones. Just going to darken this corner up a bit. Okay, adding this darker tone is going to help us blend out. I'm going to go back to that warm grey four in a minute. Um, and the warm grey five along here. Um, I'm not going to add this everywhere, just in little areas. And along here. And then go back to the warm grey four. Shall go over the top. Of everything. Blend that outwards. Blend it here. Then the warm grey free.
and this is just darkening up some of these areas now and I'm just trying to get a nice nice smooth blend where I don't have any smooth blends Okay, I'm going to take the Cold Grey 2 over the top. I'm going to press fairly hard. I'm just going to try and use this to help blend, especially along this area. Okay, I'm making sure I go over that tape. And this bit I'm not worried if I um, am sort of blending some of the detail because it is quite out of focus in the reference photo. Okay, I'm just going over that tape. And here. Now I'm going over the tape because sometimes it kind of pushes upwards so just go over from the from the tape if you are finding that and along here okay um and then i'm going to take the gold again and just use this to help with the blending and add some extra details where I feel it needs them. Not pressing too hard. We don't want to press hard. Just going to add some extra little detail and tonal values. Um, and then go back to the warm grey 4. Just where I feel like, especially in here, just if it's not dark enough or blended yet. But it's getting there. Okay, I'm going to take copper, see if this copper helps with the blending. I think what it is, is I've seemed to have got a really harsh line and that's not um, erasing or blending out, I should say. Um, so I think what I'm going to try and do is, let me see, I've got my um, my slice tool and I'm just going to see if I can just lightly go along here with the slice tool. I think this is helping a little bit. So don't worry if you don't do this on the LP, it's just that I've got this weird line going on. So I'm just using the slice tool just to help blend this section together. It's just gonna raise it's gonna take lift out some of those harsher lines because I'm removing the pigment. So if you look at the tip of the tool it's um 
got the colour pigment on and you can see the little bits on the paper so um, I'll remove them in a minute so if I take my brush just brush it off do you see how it's just softened that line ever so slightly I'm just going to do this again I'm a lot happier now <laughs> I wasn't happy because I wasn't getting that blend um, okay and then I'm just going to go over that with the warm grey 2 Oh, sorry. Okay, so I've got a nice blend there now. Um, I'm then going to take my gold and just come over this highlighted section. Blending, as always. So that's one thing I've taken from this portrait is this section could have been a lot smoother of a blend. Um, but that's fine. It's something that we can take away for the for our next portrait. Like not everything's gonna be perfect, and when you're doing originals, it's it's a nice place to learn. I don't mind making these mistakes because I'm gonna learn from it, and I've still got a nice portrait at the end of the day. He still looks really good. And I'm still really happy with this piece. Okay, um, and then I'm going to take the, um, I want my cold grey one. And I'm just going to run the cold grey one over this little bit of a highlight. I'm not pressing too hard. Just a little bit here and in here okay right let me z oh hang on take you warm gray far i just realized we haven't blended this section out here i'm just gonna blend this guy out here So this is kind of the part now where you're going to look at your piece and take a look at it and just see where do you think you need the highlights, where do you think you need to add a bit of contrast. Um, and that's all I'm doing now. I'm just sort of stepping back and looking and deciding what, what do I want from my piece, what, what do I want to look darker. Do I need to blend any other areas out? Um, so like here, I feel like I, I want to just darken here. So the warm grey for... I'm going to darken this bit here. This will all depend on how how hard a pressure you've used and how many layers your paper can take. So, because I've been using light pressure and I've got the Fabriano, it can take a lot of layers. Pastel matte, you'll be able to take a lot of layers um, too as well if you want to use pastel matte. If you're using something like drafting film, it's not going to take as many layers as this. So... Um, Vary the technique to the paper that you're using. Okay, right, so let me zoom you out a minute. So I've got my warm grey four and I'm just going to darken this part of his neck. Okay. 
Uh, take my one by five, I think. I think it just needs to be a bit darker. Yeah, one by five. I'm just bringing this down here. Take my dark sepia. And again, this is just darkening. All I'm doing now is going up any areas as I'm looking at my piece and I'm thinking, where, where does it look dark enough? Where do I need to darken? What does my piece need? So I could see that the neck needed to be darker. So just coming in and darkening underneath his neck here. And I'm going to darken under his ear, so. Now we are going to add the whiskers as well. We do have the whiskers to add. Just come along here a bit. And this is my one grey four. Along there. Oops, that was a bit hard. Um, okay, let's have a look. Um yeah, I'm really happy with how he's looking. Just gonna take the one grey. Five, just along here. I'm really happy with how this piece has turned out. Uh, back to the one very far. And I'm going back to the one very far, just going to darken along here. Um, one grey five. And I'm just going to darken this a little bit up. Well, I'm not pressing hard, I'm just adding more pigment to the paper. That's all it is. Just adding pigment. Okay, so we have the whiskers to add. In a minute. I keep seeing little bits that I just want to add a little bit more pigment to. Um, this is the warm grey. Actually, I'm going to the warm grey far here. Just darkening up some of these areas. They're a little bit light now. Now that we've got the rest of him in. Um, so I'm just darkening up some of these areas. Right, 
Okay, so whiskers. Um, I've got the dark sepia. Now the whiskers don't have to be in the exact same place as they are on the reference photo, just like the fur. Um, so I'm just going to move my reference photo to where I've got a better view of it. Um, and all I'm going to do is just kind of have a quick look, see where the whisker is and the kind of direction it's going. So we've got one coming up and round. So I'm just going to up and round. And just kind of go with it. Hang on, let me zoom you in and then you can see what I'm doing. So we've got one whisker here. And I've gone up and round and then we've got another whisker coming from the side here so I'm using the dark sea view but I'm kind of wondering whether we need the black um we'll have a look we'll just keep going with the dark sepia bringing that round and down and it's just a matter of just following the direction the whiskers are going and I'm not worrying if they're in the right place or not I'm not worrying if I miss one or two whiskers I'm just adding a few little whiskers that we can see and we'll do the same on this side so there's one there and one here Okay, so I'm not adding them all in, I'm just adding a select few in, just to show that he does have whiskers. Um, and then I'm going to take my slice tool, because he's got a few little white ones here. So you could take a watercolour pencil here if you um, wanted. Oh, not enough layers there really. Okay, so I'm going to take my white. So this is um, the White Museum Acroel. So it is a watercolour pencil um, and I'm just going to map in these little white hairs coming from the chin. Um, let's see if they're not going to be very vibrant but I don't want them to be sort of vibrant. Just want a, little, a few little white ones. Like he's got coming off his chin in here, and then go over that with the museum macro well. Now you can use this dry or wet. I'm using it dry. Um, you could use the eraser. So if I got my Tombow, let me just clean it. A clean edge here so I could come down and we could erase. Actually, that, that works quite well as an eraser. Erase those little white hairs, uh, white hairs, whiskers. So it's got a bit of a white tip there, it's got a bit of a white one there. Okay, actually, I'm quite happy with um, how he's looking. I'm just going to use the eraser. So use whichever method to create um, whiskers. And then if you need to just go in with dark sepia to darken areas up or remove a whisker, you can do. And do we have one here? Right, I think, guys, I think that's our little, our little um, Italian greyhound done. So let me zoom out and I'll show you him as a whole. So here he is. So all that's left to do is the taped edges. So I'm just going to take this tape off. And you can see we've got a nice straight edge there. I'll just do the same here. Oops. Oh, that's Ted. Let me... I'm doing this very gently. Whoops. 
very gently okay so you can see we've got a nice straight edge along there and we have our italian greyhound um so yeah i'm very happy with how he's turned out um i hope you all enjoyed this one so i'm trying to get him in frame we're at a bit of a funny angle here but <laughs> Um, you can see that he's done now. I'm really happy with how he's turned out. I hope you've all enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you all for the next real-time tutorial next month. Here's some of the detailing so that you can see all the little details that we've done. And I will share a scanned image of him at the end. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I will see you all soon. Bye everybody.